When I heard the result, I was frankly astonished. Um, I had voted to leave, but I have to say that I thought the chances of the leave vote winning were quite small because the opinion polls seemed to point in the opposite direction. And I suffered disbelief, I should think, for 24 hours. Um, but gradually there was a sense of, first of all, a pleasure, even joy, that the result was the one that I had um, hoped for. Um, fairly soon afterwards, of course, various questions began to arise about how this would happen, but that was a second phase. My attitude towards the EU evolved over many years. Uh, back in 1975, I voted to stay, and I would probably continue to vote to stay well up into the 1990s, but it was at that point when the really big projects started, the Maastricht Treaty, the Euro, and so on, um, which convinced me that this was not going to work. Um, and um, over time, that attitude has hardened. I don't believe that the EU is a workable proposition, but possibly more important, I don't believe that it has the will to make it work. Um, and that applies particularly to the UK. I don't think the UK will ever put its shoulder to the wheel to help the EU succeed, which is why I think it makes sense um, for us to leave. So there was no eureka moment for me. It was a process of evolution. In terms of my personal experience, one of the reasons I voted to leave was that I felt that the European Union was a project which was directed from above by elite um, in individuals, many of them unelected, and I was concerned that the opinions of ordinary people were being overlooked. So um, I planned a trip to Rome. I have just completed a walk from London to Rome, a distance of 2,000 kilometres, which took me three months. And on the course of that, I met hundreds of individuals in England, France, Switzerland and uh, Italy. Um, from which I gathered a, a fair amount of evidence that people feel detached from the EU. They may support the EU in principle, but they don't feel involved. And um, this really confirmed my belief that the EU is not actually uh, directing the interests of the mass of the population, but of um, a select few at the top. I don't expect the um, Brexit to alter um, my life um, very much at all. Um, uh, we're not in the Euro, we're not in the Schengen um, uh, arrangement, so um, in practical terms um, my own relationship through travel and communication with friends on uh, the continent will remain pretty much unchanged. When I voted to leave, it was obvious that there were going to be huge ups and downs in the negotiation process, and that's exactly what we've seen. But nothing has happened so far, which I don't think could, have been, uh, could not have been expected. So in one word, my attitude at the moment is hopeful. The question of whether the international context will gain from an EU without the UK um, is an, an interesting one, but I would give a positive answer. I think one of the problems with the EU is it's too big, it's too diverse, it has too many members who disagree with um, each other. Um, the departure of the EU could make it easier for the EU to become more coherent, more integrated, and therefore stronger and more influential. So in that uh, respect, I think it is a positive development. Um, the UK's position on the world stage will obviously change as a result of this, but, and I think for the better. Um, it's a process of liberation. I don't think that the UK ever uh, was comfortable operating within the common policies of the EU, the economic, foreign policy, defence policy, and so on. Britain historically has been a very international country and um, has thrived through that. And I think it now will regain the opportunity to become more international than it was within the EU. During the course of my walk, um, as I said, I spoke to a, a lot of people. Um, I can't say that I found a hugely positive feeling of support for the EU. It was more uh, in the negative sense that people 
were concerned about what would happen to them if they had a Frexit or an Italexit. Um, they got a lot of comfort out of the EU, which is obviously a good thing. They felt supported by the EU. But what I felt I did not discover, or that it lacked, was really a sort of passionate commitment to the EU as the way forward. And I think that that is troubling and something that the EU must address if it's ever going to succeed.